In this video, I'll be showing you just how easy it is to record audio directly within LumaFusion with almost any compatible microphone on any version of LumaFusion, whether that be editing on your iPhone, iPad, Apple Silicon Mac, and now on your Android device. Some editors like to film their voiceovers while they're filming their B-roll, while most record the audio while the footage is sitting within the editing program, as it gives them a little bit more control, flexibility, and more importantly, if you make a mistake, then you restart it without affecting the visual side of your edit. Some people might be daunted by the thought of editing on such a small screen like your iPhone and prefer the larger screens of an iPad or a computer monitor, but you shouldn't. It might be challenging, but it's definitely fun. For some people, it might be your one entry into the editing world. In this tutorial, I'll be using LumaFusion on the M1 Mac Mini, and the microphone will be the Fifine K658 USB microphone. The process will be the same whether you do it on a mobile or tablet, but with those alternatives, if you're using a compatible USB microphone, then you'll also need a USB adapter like this one. But if you've got a plug-in microphone like this, then your device should pick it up straight away as the audio input device. So let's get over to LumaFusion on the Mac Mini. So I've opened up LumaFusion on the M1 Mac Mini. I've got a traditional setup here. I'm using an external microphone in the Fifine K658 microphone. So as long as the microphone that you're using, whether that's the inbuilt microphone, an external microphone, or a plug-in microphone, whichever version of LumaFusion you're using, as long as that microphone is set to the primary audio source, then the program should pick it up and it'll be simple to use when you are doing your voiceovers. So in LumaFusion here, I've got my three clips. It's just B-roll of the iPhone and the actual clip that I'm going to do the voiceover on is this middle one here, just looking at the lightning port. So I'll probably have a little bit of an explanation on the lightning port and uh, something like that. But we'll see when we actually get on it and just let the words flow. The process of adding a voiceover to a clip is the same as adding a clip or a voiceover to the main clip on your timeline. So what we need to do first is we just need to position the timeline in exactly the place that you want to add that voiceover. So for me, it is on this clip, so I'm going to add it to the start of the clip, and then I'm going to press this plus button there, which is add clip, and there we've got, we've got voiceover, transition, which is grayed out, blank clip, main title, and overlay title. And because we want to do a voiceover, we click on voiceover. And then that brings up this monitoring display here, which is currently showing the decibel levels of my voice into the external speaker. And the controls in here, we've got the X button if you want to simply cancel the voiceover like that. And it will just simply go away. Obviously we want to do a voiceover, so I'm going to click back on voiceover and brings up that again. Then we've got the record button. And then we've got this here, which brings up some options. You can change the sampling rate or change the channels from mono to stereo, as you wish. So when we do press the record button, which will obviously initiate this recording, it's going to give you a, a timer, sort of three, two, one sort of time. It's not going to start you off in exactly that position. It's going to sort of count you in. So it's going to start a few seconds before the actual clip starts. So it just gets you ready for the point and the exact timing that you need to have for when that clip starts and for you to do your voiceover. So let's jump in and let's do a quick voiceover on this clip. So I'm going to press the record button. And it has that three second countdown before the voiceover section starts. So as you can see, it's now recording, but I'm actually not doing the recording yet. And if you want to stop it, you just press the record button again. And I'm going to press the X button because I don't want to use that recording of the voiceover. So we'll do it again. So this time we'll do it properly. So I'm going to start the voiceover on this clip now. So it's going to count me down three seconds before the actual start of the clip. And then I'll go straight into the voiceover. So let's give it a go. So three, two, one. The lightning port features on the iPhone 13 Pro at the moment, but rumors are within the next few years we'll have a USB-C. So I've stopped it there and it's produced an audio track below your video track and named it VoiceOver 1. And there are several things that we can do from here. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, we've got, we've got the X, which pretty much deletes it if you've decided that you don't want to do the voiceover. Uh, you've got, if you want to re-record it, so you can do it again, you can accept it, and you can also replay it back so you can actually hear what it sounds like right now on the timeline before deciding whether you want to cancel, redo it, or accept it. So if we were to play it again. And that sounds pretty good to me, so I'll probably accept it there. 
or, and I would just press the tick button there and it would accept it. So while it's on the timeline like this, you can do all the normal things that you would be able to do with a normal piece of audio. You can edit it, you can enhance it. So if we, as you can see here, it is longer than the actual clip. So I'll, first of all, I'm gonna reduce it. So it's the exact length of my clip. I can double click on it and you've got the normal enhancements that you can do for any piece of audio that you do put on the timeline. And if we were to play it again, So for this one, I might want to start it a little bit earlier. So let me zoom in the timeline. Make an incision there, delete that. Make sure that's in the right place. Zoom back out again. And I might decide that the clip's a bit too long now, so I can cut the whole thing. Delete that. Readjust again. So I'm pretty happy with how that voiceover's turned out. I'll probably do a couple more on the other clips now. And this method is compatible with any version of LumaFusion, whether you do it on your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac like I have, or whether you're doing it on an Android device. It doesn't even matter what microphone you use, whether you're using an external USB microphone like I have, a plug-in microphone, or the, say, a phone's built-in microphone, it all works exactly the same. As long as you've got that source set to the microphone itself. Everything should work. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you with using an external microphone for your voiceovers in any version of LumaFusion. If there are any other LumaFusion related tutorials that you're looking for, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, press that like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more content just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.